We are going to discuss radical equations. So the first thing we need to know is, what is a radical equation? A radical equation is where you have an equation, which means it has to have an equal sign, and then it's going to have a radical, which is the little square root symbol that we use. And inside your radical, you have to have a variable. Okay, so a radical equation is an equation that contains a variable in a radicand, which is the inside of the radical, inside of the radical. If your variable is outside of the radical, that means it's not in the radicand, which means you don't have a radical equation, you just have an equation with a radical in it. So, and very important to know, a radical equation, your variable must be inside the radical. So example, the square root of x equals 5. So notice the x is inside the radical, and we call that the radicand, the, the information that's inside of the radical. So remember and recall that 6 squared is equal to 36. So the square root of 36 is equal to 6. So it can go back and forth. So that means that the squaring and the square root undo each other, just like adding and subtracting undo each other, and multiplication and division undo each other. So the squaring and the square rooting also undo each other. They're the inverse operations of each other. So in general, if you have the square root of x and you square it, then you're just going to get what's inside of the radical. So for since we have an x inside of the radical, we're our answer would just be x because the square undid the radical. Okay, so here's another example. Let's say we have the square root of x plus 3. Notice that the plus 3 is still inside of the radical. So that's one entire thing. So square root of x plus 3 squared, remember the square undoes the radical, so we're left with just what's on the inside, x plus 3. So when you are solving a radical equation, we have to make sure that we square both sides of the radical equation. Because one, if you do something to one side, you're required to do it to the other side. So for example, if we have the square root of x equals 5, and we want to square the square root of x, so that way we can undo the square root, we also have to square the 5. So you're going to square both sides, and on the left-hand side, the square undoes the square root, leaving us x, and then on the right-hand side, 5 squared is 25. So now what we want to do is we want to check our answer. We said that x was 25. So we have to make sure that if we plug this back into our original equation, we get the right answer. So remember, our original equation was the square root of x equals 5. So we're going to plug in 25 for x. So we're substituting 25 for x. And the square root of 25 is 5. So that answer is correct. Let's try this one. Solve and check the square root of x equals negative 8. So the first thing we want to do is we want to square both sides. So the square root of x squared is just x, and the negative 8 squared is positive 64, because remember a negative and negative makes a positive. So we get the answer x equals 64. But now we have to check that answer. So we're going to take our original equation, and we're going to substitute 64 for x. So the square root of 64 is supposed to be equal to negative 8. However, we know that the square root of 64 is 8, which is not negative 8, which means that our answer is false. So there is no number that makes this equation true, so we can say no solution. So let's review the steps on how to solve a radical equation. Step 1, we want to isolate the radical on one side of the equation. So Make sure your radical is all by itself and move everything to the other side. Once you've done that, you're going to square both sides of the equation. And then you solve the resulting equation if necessary. And then the last step, of course, is to check the solution. Because if you check the solution and you get an incorrect answer, then the answer is actually no solution.
So let's look at this example. Solve and check the square root of 3x plus 2 equals 8. So our very first step would be to subtract 2 from both sides. So that way we can isolate our radical. So we would get the square root of 3x is equal to 6. Our very next step would be to square both sides. So once we square both sides, we would get 3x is equal to 36. Now our very last, or not very last step, but the third step is to go ahead and solve this equation. So we divide both sides by 3, giving us x equals 12. So we are not quite done, because remember there is a fourth step. Our fourth and final step is to go ahead and substitute 12 for x to make sure that it works. So we're going to substitute 12 for x, and 3 times 12 is 36. The square root of 36 is 6, and 6 plus 2 is 8, which means that this works, so x equals 12 is really, truly our answer. Let's go ahead and try this one. So the first thing we would want to do is subtract 6 from both sides, and then square both sides. So here we are subtracting 6 from both sides, and we get the square root of 10x, 10 plus x equals 1. Now that our radical is isolated, now we can go ahead and square both sides. So when we square both sides, that eliminates the radical on the left-hand side, and 1 squared is just 1. Now our final step is to subtract 10 from, or not final, but our third step is to subtract 10 from both sides, and we get x equals negative 9. So now we have to check x equals negative 9 in our original equation to make sure it's going to work. So 10 plus negative 9 plus 6 is supposed to be equal to 7. Well, 10 plus negative 9 is a 1, so the square root of 1 plus 6 is supposed to equal 7. Well, the square root of 1 is 1, so 1 plus 6 is supposed to equal 7. Well, and that's true. 7 is equal to 7. So x equals negative 9 is truly our answer. Let's try this one. So our radical is not quite, quite isolated because we have this negative 4 in front. Remember, this negative 4 is actually being multiplied by the square root of x. So to undo this times negative 4, we have to divide by negative 4. So that we get the square root of, square root of x is equal to negative 7. However, we know that a square root can never be equal to a negative number which means the equation has no real solution. Go ahead and try this one on, on your own. You should have gotten x equals 36, because if you square both sides, that's the only step you have to do. Try this one. You should have gotten x equals 61. The first thing you would have to do is square both sides, and so you would have gotten x plus 3 equals 64. And then when you subtract 3 from 64, you get 61. Go ahead and try this one. This one's a little different because your radical isn't isolated. So the very first step is to isolate the radical by subtracting 3 from both sides. So you would get the square root of x equals 5. And then when you square both sides, you would get x equals 25. Try this one. So this one is not isolated either. You have to get rid of that 2. And since the 2 is currently being multiplied, to undo it, you would have to divide. So once you divide both sides by 2, you would get the square root of x equals 4. And then once you square both sides, you get x equals 16. Go ahead and try this one. So this one, your radical is already isolated. So you can go ahead and start by squaring both sides. So you would get 2x is equal to 64. So then you divide by 2, and you get x equals 32.